Good morning, everybody. It's a Sunday. I usually don't record on a Sunday, but guess what? We're recording today. Oh, I've already taken y'all with me on the chores twice this weekend, so I'm not going to do it again. But we are going to move them chicks. We are going to move those sheep, too. That'll be fun because I don't have enough fences. That's what I have to use. Farm girl and my lovely wife has living fences. I know. I made y'all wait until I got back from church. I'm the worst at this. Will you ever forgive me? I better hurry up. They're going to start flying at me. <laughs> Seems a bit much for the chickens. Is that enough chicken time? Okay. Didn't I just say I wasn't gonna make you guys watch me do chores again? I just said that. I don't know. Oh, sometimes I think my two brain cells don't work and sync with each other. Okay, before we move the chicks, we gotta move the fence to move the sheep so I can work on the chicken thing. It's just circles within circles, man. We are sheep garters. Well, we're not guarding the sheep. We're guarding where they could get out. That's all. Goodbye. We just let them into a new pasture. And they are running through, getting all the good stuff first. Farm Girl and I are standing here, minding the gap in the fence until the fence can be moved to the right place so that the sheep don't come through and eat the garden that's right behind us. Aren't they pretty? Look at all that lush grass. They're gonna love it. Look at that Farm Girl in her fancy Easter dress out here doing farm work for me. Climbing fences. <laughs> it's hard to be more proud. Right, we're gonna go check on the water. Make sure the sheep have access to what they need. Then we're gonna have to work on the Cornish Cross crawler, the corny crawler. Some of the components are actually in the red shed here. The water's running in for them. And right here, Sorry, mud pit. These weird things are components for a shade device that I had built for the sheep originally and then they never used it so I unmade it for them. But now I think we're going to try it for the corny crawler. I got these braces or these things up here. I'm not going to lie. There was some grumbling, some griping. Those things are heavy. So this is the corny crawler. It's worked for a couple of years, but I think we need to do something better, especially if we want to do more. Now, this is that janky old card I was using to haul things around. It looks janky because that's not really what it was designed for. It's designed to have these sides fold down and provide just a low ceiling for the Cornish crossbirds. I even went as far as to cut these fancy little panels to reduce wind, but I never ever used them. <laughs> It is amazing to me at how low quality this thing is. It's probably good the name is gone. I wish I could remember where I got this one so I'd never do it again. Manufactured date. Oh, it was manufactured in the year 517. No wonder it's in poor shape. It was mostly chisels and stuff back then. So really, this is cutting edge technology. I need the center rib to go in the center, obviously. But because I had this winged arrangement on a different cart, the size does not match. And so this one is too short. <sighs> I'm going to have to have a board hanging out the back with a sort of a cup to take the arm from the vertical rib. And then I'll have to try to stabilize that somehow. That'll be fun. This is, this is redneck engineering. It's great going to bolt these hinge points directly to the edge of the wood. Um, mainly I just needed to move those two center posts off the center. There we go. That's what I'm going to do. I can 
take these old pins out because I don't need the registry marks anymore. And here we are. Four bolts in the corners. I think I'm just going to run a 2x4 from the center out and it's going to have to hang like 10 inches over over here. And I was going to, this sounds stupid, just bear with me. I'm going to build up some uh, 2x4s back and forth across here with one inch holes so that the pipe will slip straight in there. And then out here we'll have to do it lengthways a little bit. Doesn't make sense? That's okay. It hopefully will if and when it works. You'd think you'd be used to working with recycled materials all the time, but man, after a while it gets old. Now is not the time to take up the conviction to uh, use new materials because at this point in human history, lumber's insanely expensive. So, recycled materials, it is. Okay, guys, don't laugh. But this is what we ended up with. All right, you can laugh. That's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> if this works, I'll be flabbergasted. My flabber will never been that gasted. I just built those up, kept them on center, and, uh, you know, screwed each layer in with some two and a halves. And, uh, yeah, that one at the front, it was a little wobbly. <laughs> so I just toenailed some threes in there. Got the one inch hole drilled all the way down. And uh, let me see if I can get that center rib up in there. Well, it's on there. It's floppy as I'll get out, but. <laughs> I'm gonna add some tie out points on the corners of the deck. It's a start. We'll, we'll see. I don't know what I'm doing. Don't tell anybody. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Alright, so my next part is gonna bolt these clamps right here onto the deck right here. We'll hang those up there and then we'll try the tarp on. All right, folks, I'm sorry. I just had to set it up because sometimes you just gotta get a project done. So, <laughs> here we are, those are the wings. There's our vertical rib there, and there's the other wing. I just threw this tarp up here. This is a 16 by 12, and I just have a real simple setup. Obviously, there's remnants of an old tarp on there. <laughs> I just doubled up that 16, so it's eight foot wide and 12 feet across, so that's six on each side, hanging down, providing shade. I have a mechanism to anchor it in those PVC pipes there. I just take that nut off, and I can actually nest those PVC pipes together. But I'm just gonna let it float for now, and we'll see how it goes. It's late, cousins are here, I gotta go inside. Those Cornish crosses will get out tomorrow. I went ahead and put a little guide wires on here, because yeah, I don't have a lot of faith in my wood blocks. I'll try and get you some better shots of it in the daylight. Okay, there. That's it set up. <laughs> yeah, nice portable shade. They can get up under there if they need a little bit more. Hopefully the dogs will protect them. The dogs can even get in there and we shall see. Oh, my center thing is all bent again. <laughs> Here is it all bound up. <laughs> Got a chain holding the two wings up. How do you know it won't fall over? I don't know that. The other wagon I had it on had a much wider wheelbase. This sucker may fall over. Oh, you know, that's life. It occurs to me that they've been here for two days. I need to move the thing. Watch how complicated this is. Ta-da! Moved them off the same spot. Alright, boom! That's that. I mean, you feel smarter now, right? Look at that. Alright guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks so much for coming by, y'all. Support your local producers. It may cost a little bit more, but you know where your food's coming from. You can vouch for the quality. You can shake the hand of the man or woman that has uh, helped grow it for you. So, if you don't know why, that's a, 
a useful thing, just try it. Just just try the food. Try a side-by-side -side comparison, I guarantee you, you'll be surprised. It's an uphill battle for us local producers. Also, consider opposing anything that would inhibit your access to local, locally produced foods. If 2020 taught us anything, it's that our current system is pretty fragile and uh, it's a staple of society that we can create our own food. All right, guys. Thanks for coming by, y'all.